Hello and welcome back. Today we are building an ARIMA model. We are implementing an ARIMA model that has non-stationary data. So our first step is to import our necessary packages. Please, you can pause the screen if I'm going too fast. I can break this down in a, another future video. I pulled the AIR data set and I'm just checking to see if there's any null values. I'm also plotting the data to see the shape of the data. We are checking to see if there is a trend. So as we can see, the number of passengers have increased, but there are some fluctuations. So we, right now, we are checking to see if the data is stationary. We can do the ADF statistic test or the or the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And so this is to determine whether or not the time series is stationary or not. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then the data is stationary. There is another way to check to see the data is stationary, and the easiest way is to see if its mean and standard deviation is constant. If both are constant over time, then the time series is stationary. Here is just plotting, and we see the graph here. We notice that the standard deviation is nearly constant, but the mean is not, so that suggests that the time series is not stationary. And so now we are going to make the data stationary. We are going to transform the data here. There are many ways to make the data stationary. For example, we could use log, square, square root, cube, cube root, and many other useful methods. Here we are doing a log transformation, log scale transformation. This method replaces each variable x with a log x. So let us now use log scale transformation and see if it can transform our data set into a stationary data set. Okay, so here we have the log x values of the time series. So to make it stationary, we can create a function that subtracts the rolling mean and the mean of the log scale so that the resulting mean will be stationary. We will transform our data set into a new data set that will differentiate between the rolling and log scale mean. All right, so now with this transformation, we notice that the mean and the standard deviation are nearly constant. So that suggests that the transformed time series data is now stationary. So what we are doing now is using the time shift transformation to transform non-stationary time series data into stationary data. And let's plot this first. And again, we see that the rolling standard deviation and mean are nearly constant. So that shows that the data set is now stationary. So we will be using the transform data to train our model. ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. It's a widely used statistical method for analyzing and forecasting time series data. Autoregressive, or the AR part, this is the component that captures the relationship between the current value of the time series and its past values. It's based on the idea that the current value can be predicted using a linear, linear combination of its own past values. Integrated refers to the differencing of the time series data to make it stationary. Stationary time series have constant statistical properties over time, making them easier to model. Differencing involves subtracting consecutive observations to remove trends and seasonality. So that's what we're trying to do, remove the trends and the seasonality. And then the moving average or the MA component is, it models the relationship between the current value of the time series and the past prediction eras or residuals from previous predictions. It's basically a way to account for the influence of past unexpected shocks on the current value. And then an ARIMA model contains, or it has ma uh, three main parameters denoted as P, D, Q. P is the order of the autoregressive component or the number of lagged terms used for prediction. D is the degree of differencing, the number of times the data is differenced in order to achieve the stationarity. And then Q is the order of the moving average component, number of lagged residuals. So in the next step, you are going to see how we determine these values. How do we determine the P, D, and Q? So we will be using such tools as ACF and PACF. That's the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation -cor function, sorry. So the ACF measures the correlation between a time series and its lag values. It helps you to understand how each observation in the series is correlated with its past observations at various lags. And PACF measures the correlation between a time series and its lag values after removing the effects of the intermediate lags. I will go into detail on a later video. So we have determined the parameters 212 for our model. We are also looking at the, we're fitting the log scale data. And now we are look, we are making predictions. So we are training, we trained the model on our log scale and now we are looking to see what these predict, predictions are based on the log scale passenger values. And we see that now we're checking the predictions against the actual values. And now we are forecasting, we're predicting future points. So we're, bring, we're pushing this out to five years. 
And many of you may be asking, well, why didn't we do a test train split? So you can train an ARIMA model on a log scale of transformation, or you could use a train test uh, split. It really depends on the characteristics of your data and the goals. I thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.